Good evening, Good evening. Uh, fellow Deliverance Centerites, <laughs> YouTubers, God bless you, Facebook people, thanks for showing up tonight, all right, got an interesting Bible study for tonight, uh, I'm going to include a little bit of psychology in the teaching tonight, but uh, I'm going to cover it up enough so that I don't get a lot of nasty emails. We're going to end the year by you breaking off these ugly curses that have been following you from your great-great-grandmother and great-great-grandfather, whatever that stuff came down. we got to get those curses off so you can kill it in 2018. You've lived your last Mickey Mouse Christian year this year. It's over. It's over. Starting next year, the devil's going to be sorry. He stepped on your face. Amen. I only got one amen on that. But that's all right. Amen. We'll work on it. Uh, starting here, December 30th, I'm going to have a hands-on training class here at noon. Okay? And uh, we'll go through uh, deliverance. We need to add some people to our ministry team because we're, gonna, we're starting to get uh, more people down at the altar. So we got to get this thing going. I'll see you. December 30th at noon, right here. I changed my radio ministry. I'm on at different times now, and I'm just on 10:10 uh, a.m. KXXT Christian Radio. All right. You did? Yeah. You're kidding. Uh oh. Thanks for that information. <laughs> I think I'm going to be getting a bill. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get another bill. Okay, all the radio programs are always available all the time on our SoundCloud radio channel there on the internet. There it is. And don't forget, starting January, Rick is going to be here the first Friday of every month to have a uh, hard teaching and a blowout altar call. Okay, so we're going to, he's going to be cranking it around here and maybe more than that. Uh, if you switch over from Google to Good Search, we would appreciate you doing that because we got bills to pay, utility bills, water bills, different bills, food for the healing house. You're done. We need some more donations for the healing house. Thank you so much for helping us. Just put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, and they'll pay us when you surf the web. Okay? And these are all four of our teaching channels on YouTube. And tonight's broadcast is on our main YouTube teaching channel. Our Thursday night broadcast is always on our live stream channel. Okay. If you know somebody that needs deliverance but they won't come for it, just send me an email and I'll send you one of these deliverance lists for screwed up Christians and the other words for mentally ill Christians. Okay. And uh, if you want to know if they work or not, just go to the testimonial button on the website and you'll see all kinds of emails I've gotten from people that have gone through that list and and got miracles. Okay? YouTubers, remember, we want twice as many terror cells in 2018 as we got in 2017. You go to your church, you open up a terror cell, start terrorizing the devil. The more people you get healed and delivered in your church, the more he hates it. And remember, your motto next year is, whatever he hates, I like. <laughs> Thank you for your donations. All our bills were paid on time in 2017. Amen. Every single one of them. I was late on a couple of them, but that was through uh, my wife. <laughs> my wife. My wife screwed up a couple of the bills, but I forgave her. You got to forgive them. <laughs> weren't even late on any bills, except for her. And everything paid, thanks to you all. And our YouTubers, God bless you. Thanks for thanks for sending in the donation. My Ferrari uh, has they canceled it. You can donate on the website. Thank you for that. Get a lot of donations on the website. Okay, if you need a receipt for next for your donations this year, I'd be happy to give it to you. We are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit organization here. I mean, really, nonprofit. 
I am not profiting <laughs> from this. Okay, so if you file a long form, you need one of those receipts. I'll be happy to send it down ASAP. Short form, you don't need one. If you don't, uh, if you want to check up on us, the uh, Arizona Corporation Commission, that's our ID <laughs> number. So easy to remember. I memorized it instantly. Never had a problem with it again. But that's the number right there. I think it is. And will you be able to deduct things in 29th thing? We're not sure yet. They're just getting that fiasco pummeled through. So we won't know now for <clears throat> quite a, a, a month, at least a month or two before we know exactly what's in that tax thing. But in 28, 2018, uh, in 2018, it's, it'll be, I think it's going to be the same. I said, I think. Don't send me an email. But it's, supposedly, it doesn't implement in 2018, but I'm not sh that that's not 100%. Okay? Just a thought. Okay. Let's get to our Bible study quickly. Nabal. Remember him? Yes. Oh, he's a great guy. He's a... When I look at the Bible, I do what everybody else does. When you read God's Word, you bring yourself to the Bible. And... When you read the Bible, you bring who you are as a person, your background, your culture, your family history, your personality, your personality temperament. Everything you are, you bring to the Bible. And therefore, when you read this and that and this, it sounds different to you than it did to him. This, that, and this. You get a little different view of it. You see it a little differently. And so when I look at God's Word, I see it from my background, which is counseling and psychology, 35 years of it. That's all I've ever done. So when I look at it, I kind of have a slant that way. And so when I read these stories, I kind of look at it from that perspective. I look at it differently than most people. Not better, just differently. This guy was really great. Before we get to him, uh, in Christianity today, people are really mad. There's a lot of very angry Christians out there. And anger and rage is a major problem with Christians today. And there's been extensive research studies done on these two issues in the secular world, psychiatric and medical. And it's a proven fact that people who have rage issues and anger issues also have other symptomatology, and here's some of them I took out of a journal. Headaches, digestive problems, strange abdominal pains, insomnia, increased anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, <coughs> variety of skin disorders, particularly eczema, heart attacks, heart arrhythmias, and stroke. Remember that last one as we go into our Bible study in just a minute. Anger manifests in a person's body. And what happens is when you get angry, you trigger a physical, biological response to the stimulus. And what happens is your body, your amygdala gland in the middle of your brain, those are those two little peanut glands. We've gone over that a couple times in seminars. They're in the center of your brain, and they determine whether or not you're facing certain environmental stimulus and whether you ought to fight it out or run from it. And it's your fear response to your environment. And when you are triggered in your environment, your amygdala gland determines how you react to that. Okay, so uh, nowadays people run into churches sometimes with guns and start shooting people. If that happened here, our glands would click, click in automatically create, as a gift from God. That's how you were built by God, to have that defense mechanism. And we would have a flight or fight response. Okay, So depending on who sees the guy come in with the gun, it depends on who fights and who runs. Most people run. It's not that they're cowards, it's just that this gland is telling you, hey, there's danger there. If somebody let a leopard loose in here, hey, there'd be a lot of people running for the dope. 
and that's a natural thing. It's not a bad thing. You're not a coward. It's just the way you God built you and your adreno, adrenal glands flood the body with stress hormones when you get angry and like for example adrenaline and cortisol uh, the brain shuts blood away from the torso area and the muscles it shuts it down because there's a potential for you having to defend yourself or run or something like that in a stressful situation your body reacts to anger and your heart rate goes up your respiration increases body temperature goes up you start perspiring uh, your mind gets extremely sharp and focused when you get angry and you're in in the mood to kill those of you who aren't married don't know what I'm talking about but you get that <laughs> whoa it just kind of comes on you that is what anger does to your body cause your mind to just pinpoint who you need to eliminate so to speak how do people manage anger well they usually do it one of two ways one is an explosion and these kind of people cause incredible pain and mental illness symptoms in their children when they're growing up some people live in a home where uh, they learn to resolve conflicts through stress yelling and screaming and the kids grow up in that home and they usually develop anxiety disorders and they feel like they're walking on eggshells as a kid that's extremely dangerous people that have explosive anger can lead to other things physical abuse or violence uh, they tend to isolate themselves after they've had their explosion they just don't want to be around anybody anymore either through frustration exhaustion or embarrassment People that blow their stacks usually have low self-esteem and some people that are ragers also use it to their advantage they use it to control people and beat people down and keep other people in line it's very common for parents to have anger issues and then that keeps the kids in line and they're afraid to why your dad's sleeping don't don't shh your dad's asleep I had that when I was a kid. Mom would tell us, that your dad's sleeping. Quiet. You know, because when my dad was awakened, he was a long haul truck driver. And when he did come home, which wasn't often, uh, when he got to sleep, he was pooped. And if we woke him up, which was not unusual because I was a, a loud kid, and I was very well adjusted. It's just amazing. <laughs> Something really something how I've turned out. It's been really great. Um, <clears throat> anyway, people will use their anger to control other people. Spouses are like that. The dominant spouse, usually the male, a lot of times it's the female, will use their anger to keep that person under their thumb or control their behaviors. And uh, people that have explosive anger are terrible examples to their children because the kids always pick it up. And within a few short years, you're in a state of shock, grade school, whatever it is, you're going, holy smoke, he's yelling at somebody else like I yelled at, and you can see it trail right down the family. Children are like sponges. Whatever they see, whatever they hear, they learn quickly and absorb it fast. And anger goes into a child like that instantly. The other method of handling your anger is repression. Those are people that are fuming at something, but <clears throat> cork it up. They bottle it up. They don't want to let it out. There's a lot of different reasons for that. Fear of retaliation, embarrassment, humiliation, exhaustion, different things. But they will bury stuff. And the problem with that is that comes out later with negative emotions and physical illnesses that stress that you pour in there and keep in there can be very damaging they usually suffer from depression chronic low-grade anxiety and that later on they'll usually vent in a safer environment so if you hack me off I bottle it up then some innocent person who doesn't offend me I'm liable just to unload on them and then you've got you know, domino syndrome where you're hurting more people 
instead of handling it at that moment. <clears throat> when I was a secular counselor, we did everything that we were taught to do. Uh, you know, we did what they call rational emotive therapy, where you work on the mind and they teach the person to analyze why you're angry, where, where did that come from, what triggered that, and you use your mind to think of, of uh, areas you can <clears throat> manage the anger better. Uh, how could you have changed it? And then you, we, we taught them behavior modification. Now, what did you do when that happened? And then here's what you need to do. And then you go through this whole litany of things, and then you send the insurance company a bill. Yep. That part of it was on very, very low stress, right? And sending in a bill. And then going to the bank was even less stress. I would drive to the bank, and, and I made lots of money. Problem was, I never cured anybody. And I didn't understand how to cure people of these illnesses until the Holy Ghost taught me years and years later, 30 years later actually, on what to do, which I'd like to show you tonight. But the main root of these issues is spirits. The Bible calls them unclean spirits. And this, these demons have a wide range of different skills. And here's a list of them. These, these same spirits that cause rage and anger are also the ones that cause lustful desires. They also cause violence and strife. If you turn on the TV now, almost every night or every week or something, there's some riot going on. Uh, somebody said something somebody didn't like, and boom, they're tearing down buildings. These are the same spirits that cause gangsters and <laughs> cause addictions and rage and so these are the exact same demons they just have different skill level skill sets and murder and hate are the same demons that cause people to have anger management problems as you know these spirits all come in different sizes and forms and different powers so somebody who has an anger anger management issue isn't necessarily a murderer but it's the same spirit causing murder in this person that's causing rage issues in that one. And you usually have a combination of these when you are working with somebody. They usually don't have just one thing. The second issue is all these things that I've listed here uh, are only symptoms. They're not the problem. The, the anger and the rage is only a symptom. It's not the root problem. And in order to get the person healed and for the Holy Spirit to remove the soul wound and the spirits, you got to get to the root issue of what started it, what initially triggered it. And it usually starts from some kind of a wound or pain in childhood or young adulthood so if somebody's drinking or fighting or yelling or raging or doing something that's never the problem that's always the symptom of the problem you have to go go deeper than that and then you have to get to the spirit to make sure the person gets completely cured That's why in the secular world, we, we, we never cured anybody. We don't cure people. Because you never get to the root of it. Behavior modification and rational emotive therapy and other te techniques, there's only treating the symptoms and teaching you to manage your symptoms and patching them in a way. Kind of like medication. And that was included in the process as well. Right? You're not curing anybody. Okay. Anybody mad at me? Say, uh, would you uh, would you get me a a bottle of water in there for me? Thanks. Uh, all right, let's get to the part I'm really interested in. That other part there was preliminary. <coughs> this one I really like. Let's go to First Samuel chapter 25 and check out a 21st century Christian who was alive a thousand years. Thank you, a thousand years before Jesus was born. In the, land, in, the, in the time of King David. Now this occurred after Goliath and before King Saul's death, right? David, like you and I, 
had a wandering period during their life. Okay? And everybody hates wandering periods, period where you're not into your destiny and you're not a beginner or a trainee anymore. You're searching. You're kind of roaming. You're kind of lost sometimes. And everybody, whoever makes it to their destiny, always looks back on those wandering years with appreciation. They do. <clears throat> People always look back and go, oh my God, hell came to breakfast. And But they look back on it and go, I am so grateful. Wow, did I ever learn what to do and what not to do during that period. Well, David's in that period here. He's in between Goliath, where God pointed him toward his destiny, and he had already been declared in the nation of Israel to be the next king, and everybody already knew it, but Saul was still alive, and he had this wandering period where he was had enemies here and enemies there. Saul was his enemy, right? And you're, you're the same. Some of you are going through that period right now. You're kind of looking for where God wants you in that exact spot that is your destiny that's what you really want uh, some of you check this out first Samuel 25 there was a man in mound and this guy was was rich okay? and uh, he had 3,000 sheep and a thousand goats now this was a thousand years before Jesus was born and back in those days I mean we're you're reading this now and you're going, I'm not envying this man. I don't need 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. Uh, where, where am I going to keep them and where do they go to the bathroom? But back in those days, this was information, was telling you this is Bill Gates. This is a, this is a executive of a corp. This is a loaded guy. This guy's rich. Okay? The regular people don't have this kind, these kind of assets. He lived in Carmel. And his name was Nabal, which means doofus. <laughs> his wife, Abigail, means, in Hebrew, my father's joy. Okay, so now you got, you got, my guess is here, the trophy wife situation. You got Nabal with, loaded with money and looking for a hot babe who's an older man. This happens a lot, particularly in Hollywood, it happens all the time. Happens everywhere in life, really. Uh, older guys with money, uh, they want a hot babe. They want a looker. They want a chick. They can bring around and kind of show off. And we call them trophy wives. So he, he nails her. And Abigail is a completely different person than Nabal. He's a, he's a doofus. He's a dolt. Great businessman, but on a personal basis, low character, Low integrity. Typical American Christian. They talk a good game, but when the chips are down, the character and the integrity issues float to the surface. Happens all the time. Common as anything. And she was very intelligent. She had good common sense, and she was a knockout. The man was churlish. Okay? Now, just use that term from now on in your English language, and you won't get in trouble because nobody knows what churlish means. <laughs> Kashech in Hebrew means he was stubborn. Stubborn. Stubborn, <clears throat> stubborn people have low self-esteem because... The reason they're stubborn is because they have this deep-seated sense of humiliation and embarrassment that if I give in, I'm going to look bad. And it's based on a total delusion in the mind. It's based on delusions. And they're hard to deal with. And they don't budge easy. And they're hard to negotiate to deal with. Because in their sick minds, they see themselves as inferior if I make a concession to you, see that <laughs> stubbornness doesn't come from intelligence or valid experience. It comes from 
weakness, fear, rejection, and low self-esteem. They dig in like Alabama ticks. It's emotional. It's based on negative emotions. My guess is Nabal was abused as a kid or had, was traumatized as a kid, but had a very high IQ. And he wanted to be successful in life like a lot of people do and just show them. Well, I'll show them. And if you're a stupid person, you go through life as a certified screw-up. These people who are stubborn and want to show them who don't have common sense and don't have a decent IQ are constantly making errors and getting involved in this business that screws up. They marry this person, that screws up, then they buy that and it screws up, then they get involved in that and that doesn't work out. And they live a life of doltism. We like to make up terms here because it elevates the teaching. Amen. This guy had the IQ, and I'll show them. You kind of get a feel for that? That's the kind of person we're dealing with, even though he came from great stock. He came from the line of Yes, he was a great man of God. Yeah. But he was stubborn. David was in the wilderness, and Nabal uh, was shearing, sheared his sheep. And they came upon this guy's operation. Now, back in those days, what happened was people during certain seasons had to take the livestock out of their normal areas to graze. And that's when gangsters would get them. It's very similar now to Mexico. If you go down to Mexico and you don't watch yourself, there's professional kidnappers down there. Yep. And they are looking for people to snatch. Not everybody, obviously, but there are certain streams of criminals there who specialize in kidnapping and ransoms and all that stuff. So the same thing was true there. If you took your flocks out, Sometimes they'd get raided, and you'd lose servants, you'd lose your flocks. Very similar to what happened to Job, only that was caused by, by Satan. And what we had here is he was out, his flocks were out during this season, and King David's men came upon him and treated him great. Okay? He wasn't King David at this time. He was pre-King David. But he'd already been told by God, and the prophet that he was going to be the next king of Israel. And everybody knew it. And he says, uh, he sends out ten men and he says, uh, go there and talk to Nabal and greet him in my name and uh, tell him a bunch of good stuff. Peace to you. Be prosperous. You're a great guy. We love you. Uh, we don't have any negativity toward you. We're not going to hurt you at all. We ran across your people out in the wilderness, Hey, we protected them. We helped them. We didn't hurt anything. We didn't take one sheep. We didn't take one goat. We didn't take nothing. We didn't kill one of your people. We were fine. In fact, we protected them. So ask your men. He says, they will show you, First Samuel 25, and let these, my young men, my messengers, find favor in your, in your eyes. We need help. I got to have some rations. And, hey, we're your servants. We're your friends. No problemo. Okay? You know, uh, I come in peace, as the Martians say. <laughs> and when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal and told him what David said. They got right up and talked to the big man. And he told him to shove it. Who's David? Who's the son of Jesse? I don't care about these people. Hey, this guy, these guys could be anybody. I don't believe anything you said. I'm not going to help you. In Hebrew, he said, screw you. Nobody likes to be told that. Nobody likes to be told that. Particularly after you've offered kindness and you've done people favors. When somebody tells you, screw you, that hurts twice as much. 
that kind of makes you irritable. People don't like that. And he says, listen, all this stuff's mine. I earned it. I watch. I'll show you. This is my bread. These are my. Why should I take my stuff and give it to you guys? I don't know who you are from a load of coal. You, you could be lying to me. I don't want to help you. I, and he had all kinds of excuses why he couldn't help King David out. So David's young men turned and they went back to David and told him what the guy said. And oops. Here's the classic error of people who have anger problems. Okay? If you got anger problems, you can get away with it if you're around people who don't have anger problems. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh, yeah. If you are yelling at somebody and they don't yell back, you have the upper hand. If you're mentally ill and you're nuts and you're screaming at somebody and they are mentally ill and nuts and start screaming back, we've got problems in River City. <laughs> King David had an anger problem. He had lust problems. Same demons. Remember Bathsheba is down the road. Now, Naval made the mistake of yelling at somebody who yells back. He also made a second mistake. Let me help you out a little bit. When you're yelling at somebody and you've got a pencil in your hand and they're yelling back and they have a bat in theirs, you in trouble, son. <laughs> Nabal is yelling at somebody, telling him to screw himself, who also likes to tell people to screw themselves and has the capacity to do the screwing. <laughs> Not good. Hello? North Korea? Come on. The King David had unclean spirits and he had lust and anger problems. And you stick it in his face, that could cost you your life. Translation in English, you better watch it. You better watch who you're yelling at. You better make sure you're yelling at docile family members and introvert at work. You better audit. The people you yell at, son. If you yell at the wrong person, who <laughs> you could be in trouble. Brother Mike, this is deep. <laughs> King David flew <laughs> freaked. Everybody grab your sword. David grabbed his, it says. I need to go talk to this guy. No, I'm not going to just talk to him. I'm going to take 400 armed soldiers back to talk to Nabal. Nabal didn't have 400 soldiers. He had about 400 sheep. <laughs> I'm not a military genius. I'm not Schwarzkopf by any measure, but I can figure this one out pretty quick. I got 400 soldiers. I got 400 sheep. Somebody's in trouble. Then he took 200 men with him to do what? Carry the supplies, support the team. 600 people are traveling now for miles because somebody is pissed off. Sounds like everyday life in, in, on the planet Earth. That's right. Israel, Palestinians, North Korea, South Somebody gets mad who has the means to retaliate and you've made the wrong person mad friend. You better watch yourself One of the young men 
told Abigail Nabal's wife he said hey David sent some messengers out here and he was real nice to us and he helped us and he took did this and that and then and Nabal told him to shove it this is brother Mike's translation and this <laughs> he railed on him meaning what I just said and the men were good to us. They would didn't even hurt us. They didn't we they didn't steal a thing from us as Long as we walked with them uh, In the fields, we were fine They even protected us. They were a wall to us on both sides day and night Why they need protection? Well from what I said earlier, there's always gangsters around back then there were robbers they called them Gangs of robbers stealing livestock stealing women stealing whatever was a value that steal anything that was worth anything they would rob caravans and all kind of things. It was very dangerous back then. Very similar to living in a major city now, Detroit, Chicago, whatever. Dangerous. And King David's men said, hey, we'll, we'll watch your property for you. He, he, they weren't paying him. He was doing it as a favor. Okay? When people have rage and anger issues, believe it or not, most of them are basically good People. Not every one of them is rotten to the core. Yeah, I know him. You know Bobby? Oh, I know him. He's a great guy. But listen, don't. And then you tell them what it is that triggers the anger. See? He's fine up to that point. See? Then they tell you, don't cross that line. Or there's going to be an explosion. Well, Nabal was rotten to the core, but David was a really good guy until you pushed his buttons. Then his demons manifested. He would freak. King David loved the Lord unless, like you and I, when rage takes over, you don't love anybody, including God. When the lust click kicks in, your love for God goes click, boom. And he says, Abigail, what do you want to do about this story? What, what's happening here? What are we going to do? They asked her. And he said, hey, listen, this is bad news. Hell is coming to lunch here. Our master and all his household is in danger. They told him what King David was doing and how he reacted to the bad news. Because your husband is a son of Balial in Hebrew. It means he's a worthless person. And later on that term was used to describe who? The devil. Correct. It's another name for the devil. He says, nobody can speak to him. Ha, no kidding. People that are, have deep-seated insecurity and fear, embarrassment. Deep down inside, they're scared kids. But they put on this tough front, and they don't want to give in. See, And they're hard to negotiate with. They're hard to talk to. Because their mind runs in a certain pattern. And it's a protective pattern. They're trying to protect their inner self. They're scared. You can't talk to them. Stubborn people are the toughest people to work with. You ever work with somebody who's stubborn? Man, they drive you to drink, don't they? <clears throat> you, you'd like to get rid of them. Yeah, you would. Absolutely. And if it's a marriage thing, we call it divorce. They just, <laughs> gone, gone. Gone stubborn people. Oh, man, they drive you nuts. That's a fact. Nobody can talk to the guy, he's an idiot. Abigail says, Whoa, Abigail has what common sense. People that are wounded and low self esteem with stubbornness don't live with common sense, they do. 
stupid stuff. She's not that way. She says, whoa, we're all going to die. I got to fix this because Goofy's not going to fix it. Correct? Oh, yeah. If you're living with a person like Nabal, you're constantly fixing. You're cleaning up messes after them. You're covering crap they screw up. It's awful living with somebody with anger and stubbornness. Pride, shielding low self-esteem and a low self-concept. It's a never-ending cycle of failure. So she says, hey, let's get all the vittles ready, as Granny used to say. Let's get all the food and everything. I will take as much as I can out to feed these people that my idiot husband refused to help. Smart move. And she says to her son, you guys go take all this equipment, take the food, I'll follow you afterwards. But she did not tell who. <laughs> why? Oh, man, you know why. People that have anger issues, that have buttons that can be pushed, people living around these imbeciles, all you want to do is not push that button. And the only time you push it is when you're desperate. You're in a desperate situation and you have to broach it. If you can avoid it, you will. I don't need the added stress. I don't need to listen to that. I already know what he's going to do. So, so I'm not even going to tell him. I'm packing up and we're leaving without him around. And it was so. She rode on the ass and then she came down the hill and she met King David and... So did the men. They came down to see her. And uh, because David had said this, here's what he had previously said. In vain, I helped this guy in the wilderness. We didn't steal one thing from him. And what did he do? He gave me evil for good. Okay? People that have rage and anger issues always have this demonic sense of justice. That's why these Christians are so screwed up. Instead of a Christ-like nature of turning the other cheek, the Christians with these unclean spirits are appalled that they have been treated unjustly. I can't believe you screwed me over. God Almighty, that's appalling. It's a demonic trick. The Holy Ghost nature is the opposite. Hey, chill that out. I got that covered. I'll fix it for you. Don't you take matters into your own hand. King David don't care nothing about the Holy Ghost. He's mad. When you get mad, you don't care anything about God. <clears throat> Nothing. Nothing. King David couldn't care less about Jehovah. All he cared about was, I can't believe it. Somebody affronted me. They offended me. I was treated unjustly. And here, well, I'll plead my case to you. And they'll tell you, they'll spend hours telling you, you're going, oh God, is this over? I don't want to hear this again. I know you got screwed. Yeah, I get it. See, they play it over and over. Why? It's that deep-seated, wounded kid in there that goes, oh my God, somebody stole my lunch. The ball would have fit in right now in Christianity here in America. He's a perfect fit at the megachurch. I didn't do anything, David said. I, I did this and that and that. Poor me. Oh my goodness. What they're doing, the demons do, is they give you the sense of injustice to justify your anger. Yep. And they tell you a lie. They say, oh, it's just righteous indignation. <laughs> and you fall right into the trap and proceed forward like a complete spiritual fool. King David feels justified. After all, this is right and that's wrong. <laughs> Whatever's right. I got screwed. 
Somebody needs to pay for that. That's what. Oh, don't you see it? King David was a broken little kid. He grew up the runt in the litter. He was the baby in the family. He got all the rotten jobs. The brothers got the best stuff. He got stuck with the leftovers. He's out in the field with his sheep. They dumped on him. Oh, don't you see it? Can't you? Ne Nabal and David, very similar emotionally. And on top of that, see, here's what Christians do. When they get uh, offended and they get mistreated, oh, I can't believe you did that to me. Well, God's on my side. He's not on yours. They go, Lord, God, Jesus, let me pray for him. God, oh, rain down hell on him, Lord. <laughs> yeah, you want justice. The demons tell you that. They say, pray that way. Ask God to get justice for you. After all, he's mad too, like you. That was clearly wrong, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's all wrong. Everything's wrong. I'm right and they're wrong. So God, after I'm done with him, God's going to throw him into hell. <laughs> I'll send him to hell, but God will throw him in there. Don't you see in this? Stubborn Christians have this deep sense of demonic self-righteousness. So when they're affronted and offended, oh, somebody's got to pay for that. Not knowing it was already paid for at Calvary. Not knowing Christ was trashed and gutted, but turned the other cheek. When you lose your anger, you have no love for God whatsoever. Your love goes, disappears. Amen. Gone. All that's left is a self-righteousness. Well, God's going to step in and fight for me. After I'm done kicking their butts. This thing's not going to work here. When I get there, David said, there won't be anybody left even piss against walls. What the heck is that phrase? What well, was used six times in the Old Testament. In our society, it seems odd, but back then it was a normal, normal phrase. It means that urinating was considered a, a nothing type activity. There's no real value in it. It was just something everybody had to do. You don't write books about the joy of urinating. Nobody cares. It's just a, you got to take a leak. Boom, that's it. Who cares? Get back to what you were doing. Well, David was going to finish these men off. It was a term only used about men. He was going to kill all of them off so there wouldn't be one guy left is what he's saying. I'm so mad, I'm going to kill all of them. Nobody will be left to even take a leak. <laughs> and then God's going to come in and take care of them because I got affronted. That's the way you work in your Christian life. Oh, I can't believe somebody said that to me. That's appalling. How dare that person step in? Jesus, get him. When Abigail saw David, what did she do? She was an intelligent person. She had common sense. She had integrity. All the things Nabal didn't have, she had. All the things King David had, didn't have, she had. She had true respect for God. David didn't. When they pushed his button, Jehovah went out the door. Abigail, no, she retained her character. She was a true follower of Yahweh, not like Nabal and King David, who lived in their emotions. When you live out of your emotions, your Christian life crashes. Your soul is your enemy. It'll betray you. You'll feel things that aren't real. You'll sense things that aren't true. King David, in his mind, thought he was doing what was right, and he had a legal right to do it. And he was in sin the whole time. So 
what stubborn people do. It's what angry people do. They don't think straight. Well, not Abigail. She's not her husband. And she's not King David. She's up here. They're down here. So she does exactly what needs to be done. Brilliant. Brilliant. She humbles herself before him. And she falls on her face. And she says, like Jesus, let, let his iniquity fall on me now. Now that's character. Oh. Let, me, let me speak. Let me humble myself. Hear me out, she says. And let not my Lord regard this man of Baliya. She calls her husband the truth. He's adult. You see, well, that's disrespectful. You shouldn't say that to your husband. Hey, when you're about to, when your whole family is about to be killed and your only chance to save them is to do what's right, you've got a little license there to word things in a certain way that you wouldn't normally word it, okay? She didn't say that to him at breakfast. Good morning, you worthless piece of garbage. No, that didn't happen. <laughs> but this is a different scenario with a different set of circumstances. Life or death hangs in the balance here. My husband, who's like the devil, she says, he is so named for he is, he's a fool. It means to be a fool or adult. And he does folly. He does stupid things. This happens all the time now. People that have hot tempers, they're, they're unscriptural, they're unspiritual, they make bad choices, they hurt people, they hurt themselves more than they hurt anybody else. They isolate people, they train children with negative, rotten behaviors. They then grow up picking up demons and having inappropriate social and personal relations. The whole thing mushrooms like a village with Ebola. But I'm your handmaid, and I, I did not see the men when they came to me. Now she's talking to him, King David, in his mind, which you've done it yourself. Somebody's blowing up. You're trying to calm them down. You appeal to their intellect. See? After all, King David, chill yourself out, buddy. I wasn't there. When your men came, had your men came, are you kidding me? We would have we would have broke out the buffet. I would have helped you from A to Z, but I didn't know about it. So forgive me. She's humbly going through this brilliant approach, super smart, Abigail. And she says, "Listen, Jehovah." Is your God he's kept you today from coming to blood and killing all these people after she appeals to his mind she then appeal appeals to his spirit man not his soul which was fuming with anger hey you're you're the future king of Israel. You, you are God's man of faith and power. And God sent me here to keep you from murdering all these people and avenging yourself. And I pray all your enemies will, will be as those that seek you. Humble and not be like Nabal. Now here, take all this food. I got all these vittles here for your people. Take all these things. Oh, don't you see what she's doing here? She hits his mind. She hits the spirit man. Bang. Then, as you know, people that get extremely angry have unclean spirits, which means they are also food people. They like fleshly things. Sex. Food. So then, she hits his appetite. 
That's the way you get the guys, gals. Yeah, it's free counseling, marriage counseling, right? This portion. Well, if you feed them right, you can dupe them. I mean, you can help, you can help them. Here it is. Look, I've given all these things to your to your people. This is what we should have done, but I wasn't there when they showed up. And so I'm so sorry about that. Had I been there, I would have handled this thing completely different. Please forgive my trespass. So now she is hitting him hard. Okay? You can tell how the conversation is going here because it's going well. So she's unloading the big stuff at the end. Now she's saying, you know, really, I screwed this whole thing up. And I need you just to forgive me. What's she doing there? Trying to save the lives of her entire family, their whole village. Nobody would have been left to take a leak. <laughs> when that happens to you, it's time to humble yourself. Thank you. And listen, you can forgive me for this because Jehovah, the eternal God of the Hebrews, is taking care of you. And there's no way he's going to let you down. You're the future king. Oh, she, now she's got him. See, what you got to do is hit these different areas to fix this thing. And then dump the big stuff on them. See? You got to build them up. That's what you did when you were talking to somebody who was angry. I can't believe these people did it. Honey, honey, hold on a minute. Oh, but now listen. You're 100% correct, honey. I know it. You're right. They shouldn't have done that. I agree with you totally. I can't believe they did it either. That's appalling. See how you're doing it there? But, and you kind of click to the mind. But if we do this, and then we do that, then that's going to happen here. But I agree with you. They shouldn't have done it. And they better not do it again. And you bluff your way out of it. The Lord's going to take care of your house because you, you are God's man of faith and power. You fight Jehovah's battles. Now she's pouring it on. Because it's working. He's listening to her. Notice he doesn't say anything. He just listens. Well, she's getting through to him here. He said, wait a minute. Now, his conscience starts to kick into the conversation. And he starts to second guess. He starts to reevaluate. He starts to look back at himself. And he said, whoa, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I did lose my temper again like I did when I was a kid when my brothers used to rub my face in it. I wanted to kill him. I remember that. You know what? Maybe I was too hasty here. And then she says, a man has risen to pursue you and to seek your soul. The soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord. That was a Hebrew <laughs> phrase that meant Jehovah's got your back. You're here. Jesus worded it like this. No man can take you out of my Father's hands. That was the Hebrew phrase for it. You've got the bundle of life. That means Jehovah's on you. He's taking care of your life. He's got you in his protective covering. Look, your God, Yahweh, your God. See how she's getting through to him now? Now she's appearing, appealing to his spirit, man. Abigail is a skilled negotiator. She would, be, she would do well as a hostage negotiator for a police department. <laughs> and the souls of your enemies, he will sling them out. See? Now she's telling, listen, you don't need to worry about my psychotic husband. You don't need to worry about these few people over here. This is beneath the great future king of Israel who is a warrior of Jehovah, the great Hebrew God. This is beneath you. I am beneath you. Look, I'm on my knees. She's a genius. 
Verse 30, it shall come to pass when the Lord has done to my Lord all the good he has spoken concerning you, and he has appointed you as the ruler of Israel. She knew all about it. Now she's playing all the ace, king, jack, queen cards. Now they're coming out. Listen, don't worry about this here. You got bigger fish to fry than this little thing. There will be no grief to you nor offense of a heart to my Lord. Either that you have shed blood for no reason. The whole thing was satanic. One guy acts like a complete idiot. King David then charges all of them with it. Who's the bigger idiot? King David is murdering innocent people over something this person did. One guy stabbed him in the back. Now there's nobody left to leak. Can you say overreact? Can you say demonically overreact? <laughs> Honey, did you get the gas in the car? I told you I'd get it! Okay, husband manifesting. See, it's not the gas in the car. It's the spirits causing these behaviors in King David. He overreacted with rage, which always causes you to overreact. <coughs> Paul said, listen, when you go to bed, make sure you're not angry. <coughs> Why? He read this story. Probably knew it by heart. And when Jehovah has dealt well with you, just remember your servant girl. Here, just remember. I'm at the bottom here. You're going to be at the top someday. Throw me some crumbs. <coughs> I'm down here. Ha, oh, this woman. Outsmarted all the guys. Sorry, men. She never said that. Now we're going to have to have a pride service for the women. She's out thinking everybody in this whole carnival. Brilliant. Woman of God. Brilliant woman of God. Poised. Motions under control. Mind under control. Brilliant. Just remember your servant. Throw me a crumb here. Well, that got to him. David said to Abigail, he now realizes what he had done was wrong. He blew his stack. He was not performing God's will. He was performing his will. See, whenever you're angry, whenever you're stubborn, whenever you listen to these unclean spirits that cause you to have these demonic emotions, you're not listening to God. No, you're not. You're listening to Satan. Belial. That's who was leading King David to take 400 men to go kill a bunch of people with no weapons. Slaughtering people because this one guy screwed you over? You got to be kidding me. A prelude to Christianity. Listen. You will never give an account of his sin. And you will never give an account of his. Not King David. He wanted all of you to die because of your sin. Oh, how unchrist like can you be? How unjust can you be? King David's demons were telling him, hey, that's a, you were affronted and you're going to be the king of Israel. Are you going to take that? No, I'm not going to take it. The devil took David. And had it not been for Abigail, he would have murdered in cold blood all them people and had that stain on him the rest of his life. When you do something, when you're raging and you're angry, you're embarrassed about it later. If you have any conscience left at all, some people don't. And you're ashamed of it later. 
<clears throat> it hurts to be embarrassed and humiliated. But it stops hurting the next time somebody else pushes your butt. Wow! <laughs> Start it all over again. And so you have years of this repetitive behavior of this wounded, sad little boy constantly blowing up. He says, listen, I love King David because he's the Peter of the Old Testament. Yes. Both these guys were monumental screw-ups, but they had something few other people had, a repentant heart. And God forgave all of Peter's screw-ups and all of King David's screw-ups because he could humble himself when he saw he had failed not everybody has that gift in fact I submit few people have it the other people the people that don't have it want to cover the thing up sweep it out the dough and just forget about it and move on hoping they won't do it again and they always do King David had it, man. He repented. His conscience got to him. She's right. I was going to murder and cold over one guy that insulted me. That's unbelievable. These other people didn't do anything wrong. What's wrong with me? What am I, nuts? He repents and comes back to God. But notice here, David's not mad anymore. While you're raging, you have no time for God. But later, if you can get the person that Chill it. The Holy Spirit then can whisper to the conscience, hey, you hurt these people. You lost your temper. You're damning your own soul to hell, and now you're trying to damn theirs. You need to make this right. The Bible calls it restitution. You need to make that apology and send that email and change your behavior. You need to get rid of these unclean spirits so you can stop these asinine behaviors. Unpopular, but good advice. You kept me this day from murdering all these people and avenging myself by my own ham. Now he saw it. When he was angry, he saw it as God's will. Now he sees it was his will. I'm mad and I'm doing it. And I'm sinning. As bad as the idiot I'm going to kill angry people always end up as bad or worse than the people that trigger them. Amen. they always get sicker <clears throat> with an exception if you're Peter or David and you've got any conscience left at all there's hope for you you can be healed. Amen. David received what she brought. He said, go in peace. I've heard your voice. I accepted you, what you said. Wow. Abigail, a great person. Abigail comes back to Mr. Happy. Well, when she got home from saving the, everybody's lives, he ignorantly didn't know what was going on, and he was doing what he normally does, which was what? Party on. He was an addict. Why was he an addict? The soul wounds from his childhood. The demons... Triggering his anger and his frustration and his lusts had to be placated with drugs, alcohol, sex, food, something fleshly beneficial. They live these lives. Blow up, drink it, drink it up. Scream it out, shoot it up. Why? I've got to get away from myself.
Why do they have to do that? Here's why God showed it to me When somebody blows up like a psycho the demons are pushing them to do it and applauding them After the blow up happens and they calm down the demons then come in like King David with self-righteousness telling the person You call yourself a Christian you just yelled at that person You're a trashy person you're garbage. What's wrong with you? You're pitiful. I'd be ashamed. Oh, time to get that beaten down so you can survive living with the person you wish you could get away from the most yourself. I'm not getting mad again. Ha! <laughs> The demons are just sending you another person at work, at home, at, and they just know right where your buttons are. They have them all memorized. Push that one, boom, and you blow. Then the cycle starts again. Oh my God, I can't. You give them a good cuss, and I can't believe you did that. You, you're a Christian, right? You're a terrible Christian. I'd be ashamed if I were you. And you know what? God's not going to answer your prayers because you blew up at that person. You're a disgrace. That's what they tell you. Oh, I can't live with me being a disgrace. I gotta get out of here. Nabal. Oh, there he is. Now he's drunk. Why? You gotta keep partying to not have to face yourself. I saw a fantastic. ESPN uh, show where they profile people. What's the name of that show? 30 for 30. 30, 30. 30 for 30, thank you. And the guy they were profiling was absolutely fascinating. It was Ric Flair, the greatest wrestler that ever lived. This thing was incredible. This man was a chronic everything. But what he was really running from was himself. He couldn't stand to be alone. He had to be at a party. He had to be with other people. He had to be having sex. He had to be drunk because he couldn't stand to be alone. And they asked him in this documentary, why couldn't you just stay in your hotel when you're on the road and just relax for a little bit? He says, well, you know something? That's a good question. I don't know. That's a good question. The demons won't let you just sit there. They'll just remind you what a piece of scum you are. And once you start receiving that and believe it, you've got to do something about it. You've got to have something to eat. You need a pizza. You need a stack of beers. You've got to do something to get that condemnation out of your soul. And it never works. It's only a temporary patch. Well, she doesn't want to talk to him. She says, I told him nothing. Wow. Again, character, integrity, discretion, common sense. Abigail, far superior to King David or Nabal. I can't talk to him now. He's bombed. And I'll tell him in the morning. So he's up all night, gets very little sleep. He's not feeling well. He's got a massive hangover. And what happens in the morning? When the wine was gone out of Nabal, she told him what happened. And the guy's heart died. And he became like a stone. That's a term we would use to say he had a stroke. Yep. Came to pass about 10 days, and the Lord mercifully let him die. What had happened there? The King David news only sped up the process. If you continue to allow this anger and rage in your soul, it's going to physically kill you before your time. You're going to die early. You're going to die ugly. He's dead. Well, Nabal, Nabal died, and 
nobody's crying too much over it. But later on, when David heard about it, he said, Blessed be Jehovah that pleaded the cause of my reproach from Nabal and kept his servant from evil. Translation. Translation. Let the Lord handle it for you. Don't you do it. Because no offense, you're going to screw it up. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, let's analyze your track record. Anybody here like come up here and talk about their track record? Okay, I don't think so. This is just a guess. So, King David had, quote, come to his senses. His spirit man was speaking to him and said, well, you are sinning, you're a murderer, you're no better than that guy. You need to repent. And he did repent. And that was his great skill. He would do the stupidest things and then he would break and God would forgive him and take him back. It doesn't matter what you've done. God will forgive you and take you back if you break. If you just expect it, if you're appalled at somebody, you're going to get nothing from God. And you're going to get plenty from the devil. You're going to be a very sick, sorry person. The Lord returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. Yeah, David had nothing to do with it. That's the way it should be. It's none of your business how God handles these things. You're not supposed to take matters in your own hand and handle them. When you're angry, when you're raging, you make poor choices, you're listening to demons, and you're sinning. And then David did something interesting. Check this pattern he learned here out. Watch this. Remember this pattern later in his life. He takes a little trip and he goes, wow, this trophy wife is now available. Happens in Hollywood all the time. As soon as this one's gone, there somebody else scoops them right up. I mean, it happens all the time. It happened back then or a thousand years before Christ. David took her to be his wife. Notice that little pattern there. Notice that behavioral activity there. Does that kind of ring a bell later in his life? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, no. Oops. David, in addition, was so happy to have Abigail. He picked up another wife. And why not? <laughs> Just for a split second there, David turned into a Mormon. <laughs> I don't know him. He picks her up, and she's wife number three. Abigail's number two. But you notice that behavior there, taking a wife from another man who had died, which it was legal to do that. Notice the Bathsheba thing. Notice that hell came looking for him. He did the same thing, only he did it differently. He took matters into his own hands, unlike that one. She talked him out of it. She wasn't there to talk him out of Bathsheba. And King David went back to his old self. Only this time it wasn't anger, but it was the same demons. It was lust. He looked and saw her. He asked about her. Who's she married to? Oh, he's married to this guy. Well, let's get rid of that guy. <laughs> Jehovah got rid of the other husband. And that's none of our business. That's God's business, not my business. King David made it his business. He helped the good Lord along there.
Let's pray then. Lord, there's a couple of my friends here tonight who've been called by you to minister in the Spirit and called to other ministries. But they haven't made it yet, and they're not going to make it because they have, they have the King David syndrome. They got this unclean spirit in there that got in when they were kids. And anger. Lurks beneath the surface every single day. And the days that the anger doesn't manifest itself, those are the days the demons tell them, you're healed. You're doing a lot better. Hey, you're reading the Bible and you're praying. It's working. And then the next day, Lord, they send somebody to trigger them. Somebody lets them down. Somebody screws up a job. Somebody doesn't show up. Somebody stabs somebody in the back. And then they're triggered. And you taught me something, Lord. You taught me something, Lord. You allow those triggers to let your child know the problem's still there. You allow someone to push their button as a sign to them, hey, this problem is still there. You allowed King David to be tempted by Bathsheba. Not so he'd sin, so that he would know the lust problem was still there. Lord, I know what the devil does. He tells him, hey, you haven't blown your stack in a week. Oh, you've been doing great. You're cured. So they lie to you, and then, then we lie to ourselves, Lord. And they're not cured, and you know they're not. So you allow somebody else to trigger them and hurt them and push that button so that they know it's still in there. That spirit is still in there. You allowed them to be hurt, and they ran to food. They ran to sex. They ran to rage. They ran to drugs. They ran to alcohol. And you allowed that to happen because you're letting them know, hey, that needs to be healed. It's not the person that's the problem. It's the wound and the spirits and the soul. And tonight, tonight it's time to get healed of anger. And the shame and the depression it constantly brings. It brings constant shame. The devil is the accuser of the brethren, Lord, and he points his finger at me all the time. And I'm asking you to help them because this anger and rage issue is going to keep us from our ministry and fulfilling our destiny. We will forever be treading water, going nowhere. The only way to do it is to face it and repent of it and cast that anger and rage spirit out of there.
And then just raise your hand if you've got anger problems. Nobody can see you. The lights are down. You've got something inside you that when somebody pushes that little button there, it just automatically flares. And you want to get rid of it. The root of it was the pain and wound you had when you were younger, but the person triggering it is that spirit in there, that anger spirit who hates everybody, and he hates you, and he will never stop for the rest of your life until he is removed. He will not stop. And the Holy Spirit is able to remove him if you'll repent of it. If you want him removed, come down here and see me now. Come down right here. If you want him removed and you feel that you're willing to repent of it, you've got anger problems, somebody triggers you, click, it triggers in there. It's a soul issue. You can feel it. When you have that trigger, sometimes you get a knot in your stomach or a tenseness or a tightness in your chest gets tight right in here or your neck tights up you can feel that spirit moving around in there and he's mad he's mad and he hates people he hates you thank you he hates everything about you you are never going to fulfill your destiny to you get him out of there. When he comes out, those people can't trigger you anymore. After he comes out, you're not mad at those people anymore. No more what they say to you or what they do to you, it doesn't fire. He's gone. King David never got healed. Why? They didn't have deliverance then. We have it now. King David, if he was here tonight, he'd come down here and get that thing out of there. He'd do it. He's the type of person that would do it. And you're the type of person that will do it. We have deliverance because of the blood of Jesus. We have deliverance because of the broken body. Come out of there. Of Christ. Poor King David. He didn't have the benefits you have. But he had one thing that most people don't have. Broken heart. A broken heart. He was sorry for what he did. Just ignore her. He was sorry for what he did. Will you be sorry now? Yes, she will. You'll just pray along with me. Dear Jesus, I can't believe it. I blew up again. I said it was over. I said I wouldn't do it again. And this ugly thing hit me again. Come out of there. Stop getting mad at him. Come out right now. I've got demons in my body that hate my spouse. I got demons in my body that hate me. I got spirits in my body that drive me to drink and use drugs and eat. And I want them out in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm sorry I've lost my temper. I'm sorry I cursed and swore. I'm sorry I pitched a fit. I'm sorry I got angry at somebody I shouldn't have gotten angry at. Come on, just pray it out. Don't just stand there and do nothing. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. I said, come on. Dear Jesus, please forgive me. Say it. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Say it louder. God help me. God help me. I'm so sorry. Come on. Be like King David. Be like King David. Just repent of it. 
I'll repent of it in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll repent of my anger and my temper right now. I command it to come out. You man hater, come out of that body right now. Come out of there right now. Come out. Right now. Ugly men. Hating men. Come out. Hating men. Hating myself. Come out. Hating myself. Come out of that body right now. Hating myself. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Come out of that stomach. Come out of there right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Hating myself. Come out right now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. God, I'm so sorry. Anger. Violence. Hatred. God, forgive me. There it is. Let your tears go. That's the Holy Ghost touching that guy right there. Anger, violence, and hatred. Murder. I command you, murder, come out. I command you, murder, come out. Hate, come out in Jesus' name. Hatred, come out in the name of the Son of God. Go! Get out of my body right now. Rage and anger and hatred, I command you to come out of me. Spirit of rage, come out right now. Come out right now. Go! Come out of there. Hatred, come out. Hatred of men, come out. Hatred of myself, come out of me. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. I said come out now. Get out of my body right this second. There it comes. Come out right now. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold of the man of God. Rage and anger. Come out, you evil. 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 Come out, I said. Evil. Keep it. There's more in there. Go now. Come out of there right now. Come on, man of God. Fight harder. Fight. Satan, come out of me. Satan, come out of me. Anger and violence. Violence, come out. Anger and violence, come out right now. Gangster, come out. Yo, gangster, come out. Hatred. Right now, come out. Hatred of women. Just repent of it. How you doing? How'd it go? A little better. A little better. That's not good enough. Now come on, let's get the rest out. That's all you want? Come out in Jesus' name. Now. Go. Get out. Demon of anger, I hate your guts. What's your need, honey? What do you need from God, honey? Um, just, there's some, there's somebody inside of me that just hates me and tortures me. Yeah, that's a rejection hey. demon. Did you get hurt when you were a kid real bad? Um, my stepfather's sexual. What do you do to him? He molested me and... What's his name? Ulises. What? Ulises. Ulisa? Here, take a big breath. Take a big breath. Father God, I forgive Tronista right now, and I ask you to forgive him. I ask you to have mercy on his soul. And those demons he transferred into me when I was a child, he must come out of me right now. Go now. Come out. Go. Come out of me. Come out, out of my body. Come out of my vagina. Come out of my womb. Come out of my chest. Come out of my body right now. In Jesus' name. Take a breath of love. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of there. The demon that hates her. Come out. The spirit that hates her. She's repenting over hating herself. Lord, I'm sorry I hated myself. Please forgive me. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Self-hatred. Go. Just repent of it. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. I want this spirit out of me right now. Unclean spirit, come out. Transfer spirit from adultery, come out of me right now. Cursing and swearing, come out of me right now. Cursing and what? Swearing. 
come out of me right now. Every ugly man that ever touched me, leave me now. Every ugly man that touched me, leave me now. Go now in Jesus' name. Go now in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. What's he doing in there? Pressure in my head. Okay, now he knows something we don't. What do you have? What have you repented of? Do you have any bad feelings about anybody? Well, my my coworker that did witchcraft. She did witchcraft. What's her name? Andrea. Okay, Father God, we lift Andrea up to you right now. And we ask you to forgive her performing witchcraft on this woman of God. Who? My family, my son, my grandfather. And I ask you to forgive her family and her grandfather and forgive her for having bad feelings about her. She's got negative feelings about these people. She has ought against them and she's going to repent right this second. She's going to repent right now. She has ought against these people. Come on, just repent of it. Let's go. You can't get delivered if you're not going to repent of that. Just repent of it. Come on, sweetie. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold now. Come out of there. Hatred and anger. What? You trying to talk to me? Yeah. You know, what do you need? What else can I do? No, this is a tough one. This is witchcraft and Buddhism. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out, you bitch. Don't let her do that. Don't let that demon do that. Where, where'd you get that cross at? Where'd that come from? Take that cross off. Satan, loose your hole. Repent of it right now. Jesus, hold it in. Anger and rage. I, hatred for white people. Hatred for black people. That's satanic. Just repent of it. Whenever you see somebody manifesting, then you give them a bucket. If they're not manifesting, don't hand them out. Because okay. people will criticize us. Uh, they'll say, oh, you're just trying to, uh, to you know. Makes sense. Yeah, you're, you're encouraging it. We're not encouraging it, we're just reacting to it. Satan, I said... Yeah. Thank you. What are you angry about? I've had a lot of rejection in my family. My dad killed himself. I've, I've, uh, I, you know, I've really, um, I had a lot of perversion. Thank God I've never done that. I've had men stalk me. I've done masturbation and have them watch me and stuff. I seduced them, but thank God it never happened. God cut it off. Now I'm not free of it. And uh, I'm suicidal like my father. And, and sometimes I want to kill people. Yeah, I know. Uh, listen, uh, none of those things are you. I understand. I, no, I understand. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. But I've when you were seduced me when I was young, tried to have sex with you. No, I know. But it never happened. Well, that's not our problem. All right. I uh, just want to tell you all that. No, I already know all that. All right. Now, uh, when you was young, the rejection demon got in here. Yeah. Yeah. Right in there. Yeah. And he's the one that started this avalanche. Yeah. And he got to stay in there because he tricked you into having bad feelings about some of these people. Okay? Now raise your hands. I want you to mention every person you got bad feelings about, every single one of them. Mention their names and repent of it and ask God to forgive you. These Jesus called that ought. Go ahead. Every one of them. You get him out of there right now. You hear me? Out. Out. Get out of there. Come on, right now, quickly. Get out of my stomach. Get out of my stomach. Come out of my stomach. Go. Come out. There he is. Come out. Here he comes. There he is right there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Father, forgive me for what I've done. Father, forgive me for what I've done. Repent of it. Come on. Just repent of it. Come on, you stinking spirits, right now. Insanity, come out of my head. There it is, insanity, go. Come out of there. Hold that. Come out of there. 
Come out right now. Get out of there. Sanity. Go. What you need, honey? Sorry. Sorry. What was, what was your question? What you need? What do I need? Well, I struggle with anger issues. The anger. What triggers it? My kids. Kids. And then before that, what triggered it? Come on, buddy, right now. Hurry up. Step over here. Yeah. What triggered? What triggered it before that? My dad. Your dad? What do you do to you? Well, he was a very angry person growing up. He was always angry. And uh, he would basically just yell at us all the time. You? And, yeah, at me. Was he unjust and yelled at you? For things that you shouldn't have been yelled at for or you didn't do? No, I felt like I was a pretty good kid growing up. And he My yelled dad. at you anyway? Yeah. It was unjust. What's your dad's name? John. John. Okay, that's the key. Okay? Raise your hands. Just take a big breath. Big breath. Father God, see this beautiful woman standing here? John is her dad. And he drove a spirit of rejection into her body. He entered her mind. And he let in a fear spirit. And he's still in there today. He's listening to me right now. And she wants her dad out of her. She has a heavenly father. She no longer needs a dad. And in the name of Jesus, we're releasing her dad from her soul. I let my dad go. I release him from my soul. Out. I repent of the bad feelings I had for him when I was younger. And I command his rejection demon to come out of my head. Go. Come out now. Breathe. Come out. Come out. Come out. Tell that demon to come out of you right there. Tell him to come out. Spirit of lust, get out of me now. Get out of me. Get out of me right this second. Come out. I forgive my dad and I let him go. I let him go right now. Go. My dad's spirit of anger. Come out of me. Rejection and anger, come out. Come out of there. Come out. Right now. Come out of me. Hey. Hey, uh, uh, lust isn't the problem here. Somebody hurt you when you were young. Who was that? My mother was freaking kind of crazy. What was her name? Marita. 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 What'd she do to you? Verbal? She's just... She's got mental problems. Does she have bipolar or something? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. And, and that, from the time you were little, that was like that? I think so, yeah. I mean, it's... When did you notice it? Well, I started realizing it a couple years ago because I started listening about narcissistic personality disorders because she's a clinical psychologist. So it was always kind of my fault. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, here's the problem. It was a spirit of rejection from your mother. It's right in here. And he's the one that let the lust demon in. Uh, it's not lust. That's not the problem. It's your mother. Do I do? You gotta get your mother out of there. Get my mother out of me? How do I do that? Uh, do what I tell you. Okay. Yeah? Just relax. Okay. Take a big breath. Go! In the name of Jesus, go! In the name of Jesus, come out. What's her name? What was your mother's name? Marita. Okay, take a big breath and relax. And Lord Jesus, uh, his mother hurt him bad when he was young. She disappointed him. 
she belittled and degraded him. She let in a spirit of rejection. And to compensate for a lust demon got in, and he got into porn and adultery and fornication. And his mother must leave him tonight. He has a heavenly father. He doesn't need a mother anymore. Come out. I let my mother go. I release her from my soul. Right now. I release her from us, my soul. Her release mother, her, come out. Release her, Lord. Let her go. I forgive her. I forgive her. I let her go. Let her go, Lord. I give her to you, Lord. I, her you, Lord. I repent of any bad feelings I had for her when I was young. Any bad feelings I had for her, Lord. I forgive her now. I forgive her now. I repent of criticizing her. I repent of criticizing her. And analyzing her. And analyzing her. I'm turning her over to you. I'm turning her over to you, Lord. And I'm not involved anymore. And I'm not involved anymore, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, take a breath and blow. Blow. Again, come out of there. Mother, come out. Mother. Come out of your son right now. Come out quickly. Let your dad go. Come out right now. Hatred from my mother. Come out. Hatred from my mother. I let you go. Get out. Keep blowing. Go now. I forgive her and I release her. I forgive her and I release her. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. There it goes. Let her out now. Let her go. Let her go. <laughs> Come out of there, you pervert. He is not a pervert. You are. Come out right now. There it goes. Grief over my mother. Go. I hate the spirit of anger. I've had enough of knowing him out now. I hate you. Did you hear me? You hate me, and now I hate you. You made a fool out of me in front of my kids, and you damaged my children. They're picking up demons because I'm angry from my dad. And I command it to come out now. Did you let her go? I'm trying. Is she gone? I don't know. I you're so. You're you got. What's that frustration there from? I think it's just I'm trying so long to, to get free. I've been struggling with the Lord for like nine years, and I'm just oh I'm just, now what? Uh, I'm just trying to get free. That was a trick. Okay. You, you were never struggling with the Lord, not even one day. Okay. That was all a lie. Okay. I'm yeah. I repent of that. I'm sorry. Okay. You're forgiven. Now, okay. in your soul here from your mother, there's wounds in there. Yeah. And plus there's wounds from other people yeah. after her. Somebody else hurt you real bad. Who was that? It was probably Julie, this girl I dated. I mean, I'm just guessing. Did you love her? Yeah, for a while, yeah. yeah. What'd you do to her? I, 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 I had sex with her. I wasn't married, so I should have done that. Did you hurt her? Only in my mind. Did she hurt you? Yeah. What'd she do to you? <laughs> really mean. Really. Julie was her name? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. We gotta get Julie out of there. <laughs> Get out of my body right now, I said. I command you to come out. God, forgive me for what I've done to Julie. I trashed her. And then I took an offense when she trashed me. Lord Jesus. And I picked up demons from her when I committed adultery with her. Father, forgive me. I want Julie gone tonight. All her spirits and all my mother's spirits, her critical spirit. I'm critical of myself. I've been critical of God. It came from my mother. Come out, Satan. Go now. Come out, Satan. Get out of there. What are you doing hanging around here? Get out of there right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Get out of my body right this second. Hurry up. Come out of there. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. 
Come out. Come out, I said. Get out of that boy right now. Come out now, quicker. Come out. Quickly, come out. Quicker, come out. Come out, man of God. Evil, come out of me. Evil, anger, frustration. Mad at God. Go now. <laughs> Go now. How are you doing? Anything left? Mm. You know him? My husband. What's wrong with him? Um, anger. Anger issues. What triggers it? A lot of it when we have arguments. A lot. And then Over what? Big thing, big thing, small thing. What's his name? His name is Tim. And he's, uh, Tim? He's got, he's got alcohol, alcohol issues. Yeah. Are you guys still sleeping together? Yeah. His name's Tim? Okay, close your eyes. Father God, Tim's demons transferred into his wife. Hurry intercourse. All Tim's demons must come out tonight. Every one of them. She's going to release her husband to the Lord and stop worrying about him and stop trying to fix him. Every spare from Tim come out of that body right now. Go. Come out of me right now. I release my husband. I release his spirits. Unclean spirits of booze. Alcohol. Come out, you drunk. Come out, you drunk right now. Come out. Come out of me right now. Come out of me. Alcohol, come out of me. Self-hatred, come out of me. Low self-esteem, come out. Self-esteem, come out of me. Wounds from my childhood, come out. Wounds from my childhood, come out. Come out of there. Come out. Right now. Right now. Evil spirit, go. Evil spirit, go. There he is. Come out. Come out right here. Here he comes. Come out of me. Come out of there, you drunk. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out. I repent, Lord, of drinking. I repent of hurting my wife. I repent of hurting myself. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry for what I've done. Are you sorry? I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead and tell the Lord. Come out of there. Next one, come out. Next one out. Go now. He wants you to tell him. He wants you to tell him. Tell the Lord. He wants you to tell him you're sorry. Come out right now. He wants you to confess it and repent it. Repent it. Come out and go. Go now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Every every spirit, drunkenness, disappointments, grief, sadness, sorrow, regrets, come out. Regrets. Lord, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. Please forgive me for hurting myself. Please forgive me for hurting my family. Come out. Go now. You gotta get them to repent to get the demons to come out. But otherwise, it won't work. Yeah, he's, but he doesn't want to repent. Satan, loose your hold. Right now. Come out, Satan. I don't know what's going on. Oh, he's too angry. He's angry at God. Yeah, see, and that's blocking it. He's not, he's broken. He's tired. But he's not broken. There's a difference between the two, right? Broken to God is different than being tired of rotten life. We can use that to bootleg to there. That's what I was trying to get him to do. But he's he's just frustrated, he's mad. Yeah, amen. Out of her Jesus' name. Go now. Go. You come out of that body right now. Hurry up, out of body right now. Hurry up. The rest of you come out. The rest of you come out of there. Come out. Come out of there, you witch. Familiar spirits and witches. Go. Come on. Get out of that body. 
Come out. Spirit of infirmity, come out. Spirit of infirmity, come out of them joints. Spirit of death, go. Spirit of death, come out. Out. Come out of her feet. Come out of there. Come out right now. Get out of there. Go down. Who else hurt you real bad? I don't know, Ned. Can you come in for a counseling appointment? What's that? Can you come in for a counseling appointment? Absolutely, absolutely. No, there's no charge. I'll, 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 no, I'm happy to pay you. No, there's no charge. Go when you go out. Will you get one of my cards and yeah. call me tonight? Yeah. What's your name? My name's Scott. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you, you so much. I love you. Grief and sorrow. Grief and sadness. Come on. Grief. Who's going to come in for an appointment? Grief, come out. Fight back. What's wrong with that kid? Was, uh, myasthenia gravis, where they lose all neurological ability. They can't talk. They have drooping. He was in both wards. Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Lucy's endocrine system. His name's Robert. And I, I want him to come early. He got him late. Lymphatic system. Uh, Poisons come out of the lymphatic system. Robert, you're getting healed tonight. Come out. Poisons out of the lymphatic system. Amen. Satan, lose your hold and come out now. Satan, go. Satan, come out of me. PTSD. Evil out. Amen. Evil out. You get that rest of them demons out of you right now. You're not supposed to have any demons. You're a woman of God. You hear me? You're a woman of God. Come on. Let's go. Out you go. Get out of me. Go. 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 How you doing? My daughter, she's sitting right here. What's wrong with her? She has a just eating disorder. Oh, she was okay. molested when she was little. Now, the problem with the daughter, are you her mother? Yeah, the problem with the daughter is the mother. What's your name? Maureen. Maureen? Maureen. 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 Oh, nice to meet you. Listen, in your soul, in here, you're carrying fear and worry for her. And you have regrets that you didn't protect her when she was younger. And that's in your soul, and you're going to repent of that right now. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for not having faith and carrying fear. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I worry about my daughter. That's a sin. That's blocking her deliverance. You're blocking your daughter's deliverance because you worry and you have fear. And I repent of it. I'm going to turn my daughter over to the Lord. Right this second. Right now. Right now. Spirit of fear, come out of me right now. Come out of me. Come out of me right now. Worry. Come out. Fear. Come out of there right this second. Go now. Hey, you got an eating disorder? You have an eating disorder? Yes. Oh. Did somebody hurt you when you were young or scare you? Who did it? I don't know. You didn't know who it was? I only recently remember like what happened to me when I was little. What happened to you? Someone like molested me. Now, who did it? I don't know. Okay. Now, just pray after me, okay? Raise your hand. Lord Jesus, whoever molested me when I was young, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, I forgive them. I turn them over to you. And I release that person from my soul right now. And I forgive them. In the name of Jesus. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for having bad feelings about him. 
forgive me for being afraid and not having faith. Today I have faith and I trust you. And I'm asking you now to cast the spirit of fear out of me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on out. Come out of me right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Oh, she got an eating disorder. She got molested when she was a kid. She's afraid. Fear. Take a breath and breathe. Breathe. Come out. Come out. Eating disorder. Is there anybody else that hurt you you need to forgive? Do you have any bad feelings about yourself? What's what what are those feelings about yourself? That you're not good enough? Let your tears go. What else? Let your tears go. Really? You don't feel you're good enough? Did you know that the Lord Jesus and his blood on your life makes you perfect in the eyes of God? Did you know that no one is good enough on their own? Did you know that? No one is good enough on their own. Everyone has to have the blood that Jesus shed. Will you receive that blood now and then repent of bad feelings about yourself? You lying devil of death. You lying demon of death. Get out of that body right now. Quickly. Come out right now. Quicker. Come out, devil. Come out. Satan, come out right now. Go now in Jesus' name. There you go. Do it. Go. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Oh, this one's ugly. Keep coming out, boys. Come out. Can he hear us? Yeah. What's his name, Robert? Yeah, Robert. Robert, listen, you got the anointing all over you right now. You can be completely healed tonight. You command that spirit from where? Afghanistan? Where is it? Iraq. You command that demon from Iraq to come out of you right this second. Come out right now. Come out of me. Say it. Say it. Come out in the name of Jesus. Fight it, Robert. Robert. I command you to let me go. Good. Robert. Come on, Robert. You're walking out of here. Come on, Robert. Amen. You're walking out of here. Get him out of there, Robert. Go, Deaf and dumb spirit, go. Get out of my head. Come out of my lips. Get out of my lips right now. Angel of God, come out of me right now. Come out. Come out. Fear and anger. Fear. Come out. Go. Say it, Robert. Loose my tongue. Say it. Loose my speech. Loose my Say it. In Jesus' name. Good, Robert. That's how you do it. Go. Go. Get out of my head. Come out of my head right now. Get out of there. Stupid, come out of me. Stupid, come out. Demon of stupidity, come out of me right now. There he is. Here he comes. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Hurry up. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Get out of Come out of my spine. You get out of my spine. Come out right now. Come out of my spine, I said. Come out. Come out of my spine. Come out of my spine right now. There he comes. Come out of my spine right now. Go. Go. Voodoo. Voodoo. Come out. Come out. Get out of my spine. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of my spine right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's see what we got. There you go. There it goes. There it goes. Good. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hurry up. You have to go. Go now. Get out of my neck right now. Come out. Get out of my body. Come out of my body. Hurry up. 
Go now. Go. Come out. YouTubers, put your hand on your body. Hey, do you repent of that? You speak in tongues? You get them. You get them out right now. You're right now. You speak in tongues? Yes. Oh, here. Ready? Let's hear it. Go. Okay. Uh, that, those are legitimate tongues. However, they're a little blocked. Okay. And spiritually, uh, those are that's easy to fix. Yeah. <laughs> the Greek word for tongues is glossa, and it's, it's a language like every other language. It's a language made up of syllables. You know, like heaven is two syllables. Moraba, that's, that's three syllables in tongues, right? When you were speaking in tongues, uh, it was nice, but you were you were. Uh, we cancel the side effects of that medicine. Uh, blending your syllables. Yeah, yeah almost right like now, it was a one long one. So I just pray after me, okay? For Shabba. Kelo Sakise. Vekoma. Ondorava. Kilu. Alu Vasha. Bendoba. Did you notice I was. Yes. Like a language. Now this time you follow me, only you uh, use your language and use different syllables and kind of slow it down a little. Okay. You ready? Lolo basha, vetura moshe veke, gendora basha, ndara basha, baba. Lolo basha, da. Perfect. Right there, go, go, keep going. Perfect. Good, very good. Use different syllables. That's perfect. Keep going. Holy Spirit, come down. Holy Spirit, come down and touch. Whoop. Holy Spirit, touch her. Touch her. Thank you, Jesus. Keep going. Holy Spirit, touch. Holy Spirit, touch. Holy Spirit, touch. Ando vashando robo shi deva va. Le mosha va la vashi terebe. Touch. Le veshe mola va vashando ro shi de. Touch. Gelo vashata. Perfect. Louder. Louder. Ando mosha da robo shi terebe. Louder. Hola va la vashando robo shi deva lo lo mosha da robo. Hola va la vashando robo shi terebe re va va va. Hola va. Excellent. Now switch it over to singing and that draws in the Holy Ghost even quicker. Beautiful. Good. YouTubers, just put your hand on your chest or your stomach and command the demons to come out. Don't pray. You've already prayed. Praying doesn't work with demons. Praying's for other things. Praying is for something else. Demons won't come out if you pray over them. Okay? First you pray and then you command the spirits to come out. You command them to go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the blood that Jesus shed. I command you, you stinking spirit. I command you, you unclean spirit. You foul spirit. You seducing spirit. You familiar spirit. I command you. To come out, it, how you doing? You were doing great over there. Every spirit of air. Proud of you. Every spirit of air. You recognize me? Yeah. You gonna come in for a counseling session? Get out, buddy. Come out of there quickly. Come out quicker. Come out. Come out right now. 
Put your hand on your body and command the spirits to come out. In the name of Jesus. Does that feel better? Notice the difference there? That'll improve your prayer life. It'll click up. Okay, the second thing about your gift of tongues was it sounded a, a little bit stale. Yes, almost I like. Been using it lately. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been losing it. Uh, uh -huh. I need to give you a piece of paper before you leave. Okay. It's okay. important. Okay. okay. You just put your hand right here. Don't touch her. Okay. Satan, I command you. Satan, I command you. In the name of Jesus. You spirit of fear. You come out of my daughter. Come out of my daughter. Bad girl, get him. In the name of Jesus. Come out. In Jesus' name, come out. Keep going. Keep going. I got a certain level of deliverance again from the anger. Oh, good. It came out of me. But you know what happened to me? That big guy right there was praying over somebody else. And he said the spirit of poverty come out of him. And all day today I was thinking about poverty. Is it a curse? Is it a demon? Or is it slothfulness? Or is it all three? Wow. It's hard to say with you. Because I've had it. Probably all three. Yeah. I need to be delivered from it. How'd it go? Oh, good to see you, Mike. Oh my god. Fibromyalgia is getting worse. Huh? Fibromyalgia is getting worse. That's a spirit. You gotta get him out of there. You got any bad feelings about anybody? No, like this week, I like start getting depressed because he's oh, not, not working, medication, nothing's working. And I start fasting. It's a spirit. And I come in here. Spirit. Now, why is he in there? But why is it kind of cycle? It's a, like you said, it's a cycle. Sometimes he no, like you said today. It's still, the promise is still here. You and uh, I have a, a friend of mine that you remember. I told you it was my first boyfriend, like the little guy I like in school. His son died two weeks ago, and I was so upset. The devil probably killed him off. I was so upset, and then I feel guilt because. I'm, I'm not with him. I think I should be with him. I should be helping him. Not that I. Do you have regrets that you didn't stay with him? A lot. Go ahead, go ahead and repent of it. Go on. I, I carried this for many, many years. I feel like I'm. I'm go ahead and repent of it. You have regrets. My, my dad didn't allow this. It doesn't matter. You still have regrets. <laughs> I feel like I'm, a, I'm a guilty. I'm a guilty for not being that. I, I feel like it's my fault. Repent of it. No wonder we can't get fibromyalgia. You got regrets and you're blaming yourself. And, uh, oh, dude, come on. In the, in the way, I, I, when I was, uh, when I was separately routine, so every time I, I, I like a man, I, I felt like, okay, because I could not be with the, the boy, I have to be with the guy. It was like a... Delusions. It was crazy. Now I look back, it doesn't make sense. It's a delusion. It's crazy. But you've got regrets and bad feelings about yourself. The demons know that, so they don't have to come out. They won't come out. Just repent of it. Come on. Just repent of it. So, and what else? What do you need to repent of? What else? Like, I, for example, I felt that I should fight with my dad at the time because my I was it was young. No, I was leaving my dad's room. His dad put me outside his house, and my dad said, "Okay, if you want to have a relationship with him, you're out of house." And uh, I, like I said, I think I should have a courage to fight and be with him. Don't allow my dad to control me, my dad. And, and I, I carry this. You're gonna repent of all this? But what I could do? What I could, oh, I could run away from my family? No, you have re you're having regrets over your past. You can't do anything about your past. So that's not. That's gonna keep you sick. Regrets are horrible. Regrets over past men. 
regrets over what you should have done with your dad, regrets over how your life should have gone, go ahead. Dear Lord, I'm so sorry that I have done this and kept these regrets in my soul for the last 10 years or more. There it is. Come out. And I repent of looking back. I repent of looking back. Come out right now. Go. Come on, fight harder. Go. Fight harder. Fight. Fight harder. I repent of it right now, of my regrets, in Jesus' name. I, I'm dying of demons and I can't stand it anymore and I'm doing it regrets come out go regrets come out regrets come out I repent of regretting my life Regret, regretting past mistakes regretting men I repent of it Lord Jesus I repent of it come on repent of it I repent of it right now come out of me right now what I should have done in the past means nothing I go forward not past come out there he is there he comes there he goes come out there he comes the past come out of me my dad come out of me dad come out come out in Jesus name Come out. <coughs> How's he doing? Uh, he's got a lot of the poisons come out. It smells really terrible. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So, so he was in out. he was in Iraq and somebody shot him or something? What happened? No, yeah, I think he just picked up the uh like the Gulf War type syndromes. You know, that mystery sickness is man, they just keep pumping him up and it's destroyed his uh oh my God, motor he's... functions and all that. His ability to speak, his oh ability to move, he has that walker. Unbelievable. But he can understand you, right? Yeah, he's getting better. He can talk a little more clear already. Hey, is there anybody in the military you got bad feelings about? Huh? Um. What's that neurologist's name? I can't say it. Okay. Okay, ready? Now I want you to Yeah. I want you to tell the Lord that you're sorry for having bad feelings about that doctor. Go ahead. You said bad things about him. Just repent of it. The doctor kept pumping me full of drugs. I resented him. And I ask you to forgive me right now, Lord. And I want that doctor and his demons out of me right now. I forgive that man. I forgive that doctor for what he done to me. And I bless him in the name of Jesus. That bitterness come out of me now. Come out of me. Come out. Come out, you bitterness. Bitterness, come out of me. I forgive him. You got to forgive him or you can't get healed. There you go, good. All right, now cast those drug demons out of you. Go. Demons of drug, come out of me right now. Go. Out. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my stomach. Did you go to prostitutes or whores when you were over there? Did you hate anybody when you were over there? <laughs> um, I hated the Muslims over there. You know what? The Muslims? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and repent of it. Father God, forgive me for hating Muslims. That was a sin. That's a sin. We do not hate Muslims. We don't hate anybody. Even our enemies. I repent of it right now. And any Muslim curse on me, I break it off of me. Oh, Muslim curse. Muslim Islam. Right Islam. Amen. 
Islam. How you doing? How are you? You okay? You need anything? I'm just praying for him. I've never seen so much phlegm come out of a person in my life. Yeah, those are demons. Poison from demons. Hey, did you repent this week? Yes. You did? <laughs> you told the Lord you were sorry? Many times. Good. Good. Now, is there anybody else you can think of about yourself you don't like? Anything you can think of about yourself? Nothing nothing pops out. I can think of things. Hmm? But I've had so much condemnation, I may have to sort that out too. Condemnation's Con not condemned for what? For getting angry. Do you know her? It's my wife. You got angry at her? No. She gets angry. She got angry at me every time I got angry. And heaped a lot of condemnation on me. I had to eat around. I ate around it though. It's fine. <laughs> No, stand up here. Oh, okay. All right. Now, you get angry at your husband? Why? Because he's angry all the time. Day, all day long he gets angry? What triggers his anger? Everything. Everything triggers it. When's the last time he was angry? On the way over here. What do you get mad? What do you get at traffic? Constantly. Yes. You're you didn't get constantly. When's the when's the time before that he was angry? The time before that he was angry. He's angry about everything. Food messing up his shirt. If he bumps into something. Now when he gets angry, how does it manifest? What does he do? He he um, swears. He says a lot of bad words. All right. And then at what age did that start when you started doing that, getting mad and swearing and stuff? What age did that five start? Six, about five or six. And then uh, was your dad like that? Not the, not the bad language. Did he have a, a quick temper? Yeah. Did he get mad at stuff quickly? He got mad at me quickly. He got mad at you quickly. What's your dad's name? Same as me, John. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> now listen, John's demons got into him when he was five years old. That's where those anger spirits came from, came from his dad. Okay? And it's not him getting mad. I know. And the devil's tricking you into getting mad at him when it's actually a spirit I know that. trying to attack you. Exactly. And you're falling for the trap. One time I, I like questioned the Lord. I said, I know he's a Christian, but his behavior is so rotten. He doesn't manifest any like fruits of the spirit. He acts like the devil. Now, uh, the Lord gave me a vision of his heart. It was on a little pillow with a little, like, feather, little baby down feathers with his little pink heart beating. Because I know that that heart is so sweet. Okay, He's why are you getting generous, mad at him? He's the most generous man. Why are you getting mad at him if you know that? Because his, his personality, it's like unacceptable behavior constantly. He drives everybody away, he scares people. Sometimes I get so tired of living with that anger and rage. Okay, now you said he, he, he. See, that's how you're getting tricked. You're getting tricked. It's not him. Because he always. So then when you get mad at him, does that make him worse or better? Well, I should be mad at him. No, I said when you get mad at him at home. Does he does his behavior get in better or worse? It's probably the same. When you get mad at him, how do you, how does that come out? <clears throat> what do you do you I say something or do to, I try to just be quiet and get out of his way? And not get around cause So I just become quiet. And emotionally do you feel anything when he gets mad? 
Sometimes I do if it's really a bad day. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where do you feel it at? Lose the body in the Lose the body in the It's in my jaw. Does your jaw get like tight? Does it get tighter? Yes. I, if, okay. if I look at myself in the mirror, okay. yeah. it get, it's like I look like a hard. Yeah, come here. Yeah. Now listen. John's dad's demons got into him. I, I know that. And John's demons got into you. I believe that. Ow! Jesus. Now, I was going to ask a question tonight. When this was going on, I smelled vomit and I felt it right here. Mm -hmm. I felt like I just thrown up. Ah, uh -huh, that was and a I was demon. I was going to ask you, is that a demon or I'm yeah. smelling you? No, he was getting ready to come out. He was getting ready to come out. And you know, all like for years and years and years, mm -hmm. people that know us think mm -hmm. of me as Abigail. And they poke in the bell. Yeah, I know they're uh, they're deceived too. Okay, ready? Take a big breath. Breathe. Breathe out. Breathe in. Father, you see this beautiful woman here? She's a tormented wife because her husband's rage demons and anger demons they're manifesting to hurt her and she takes offense at them and she gets mad at them and he's never going to get delivered and neither is she unless she repents tonight father god i repent right this second of getting upset at my husband because i know it's not him and I know I'm sorry. I did Jesus. Good. I wanted me or him to die. Good. Good. Come out. Come out. Come out, John. John, come out. Come on, let your tears go. Let your tears go. Release your tears and just repent of this. You're part of the problem here. Come on. Repent of it. Repent of it. Forgive me, Lord, for making the problems worse. I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. And I want John's demons out of me right now. In the name of Jesus. So we're starting to come up right here. They come out of my throat right now. John, come up. There he comes. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of the throat. Come out, John. My father-in-law's demons come out of me right now. Go. Anger. Rage. Was she have anger? Yeah, she was horrible. What was her name? Ethel. Ethel, Ethel, come out right now. We forgive you, Ethel. We release you. Come out of her body right now. Go. Ethel, come out of that throat right now. Come out right now. Come out of her throat. Ethel, come up. I have forgiven her. I know I have forgiven my mom. doesn't matter that Ethel's demons got in here and they're taking offenses at John. Even if I forgiven her? Uh-huh. They already got in. Oh, yeah. I thought they'd come out if I forgive. No. It's not in the Bible. Where'd you get that idea? I don't know. Oh, it's the devil. Come out. You, you, Satan, you're deceiving her right now. You're telling her lies and false stories. You're making stuff up and she's buying it. Now get out of her body right now. Ethel, come out. Mother, come out. Mother, come out of me. I command my mother to come out of me right now. I can't, that's a, that's a beam in there. Here he comes. Mother, come out of me. Mother, come out. Mother, come out right now. Mother, come out of me. Anger and hate. Criticism, negativity, lies. Go. Come out. Humiliation, embarrassment, shame. Go. Go. Right now, go. 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 Forgive me, Lord, for having bad feelings about my mother. I used to hate her when I was young. I, I had hate for John sometimes when he loses his temper for no reason. I know it's demons, but I still feel it toward John, and I repent of it. It's not John. It's his spirits from his dad. It's his dad, John Sr. And I repent of treating him like that.
and I'm sorry I treated my mother like that. Our family problems are not John, they're me. I'm the spiritual head of the family. I'm supposed to be doing what's right. I'm supposed to be helping John, not running from him. Father God, forgive me, Lord. Thank you. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Cast this spirit out of me, Lord. Go! Cast John's demons out of me. My husband's and my father-in-law. Out they go. Out they go. Come out. Come out. I'm releasing my mother right this second. I'm releasing all these miserable years I've lived with John. And the regrets I had for marrying him. All the regrets that have, have soaked my soul. I'm so sorry, Lord. Help me. God, help me. Take these wounds from my husband out of me. And my mother. They wounded me and hurt me. Please, dear God, forgive me. Please, God, forgive me. Help me, Lord. Please help me. Please forgive me. I'm overreacting. I'm reacting improperly. I'm not using my discernment. I'm making the problem worse. Worse than I shouldn't be. I have the anointing, and I'm a believing woman of God. I should not be carrying my mother's demons around me. I already forgave her. Now, come out. Right now. Come out. Mother. Mother, out now, I said. Mother. Mother, I want you out right now. Go. Mother, go. You speak in tongues? Just a little bit. The okay. same thing. Good. Go ahead. Okay, stop. Those are legitimate tongues, only they're blocked. They're blocked. Yeah, they're good, I though. never got any more. No. Oh, yeah. They're, you'll get them real easy. Watch this. Just repeat after me. Foshava. Foshava. Baka Duba. Bandoria. Bandoria. Ala Mashata. Ala Mashata. Notice how, how I was using different syllables? Kind of. I was using different ones. You notice so that? Just... Bolshevak. Melo Sevilla. Anduria. Vokromo Sheke. Alo Vashata. Notice how I'm using different ver syllables? Do you notice I was using different ones, not the same ones? Yeah. You notice that? I use the same ones. Okay. So that's easy to fix. Now, you ready? Wait, should I take my boots off? I'm huh? afraid I'm going to fall down. No, you don't need one. Ready? What do I do? Repeat after me. Okay. And this time, you use syllables from your own language. <laughs> after me. Okay, just follow me and then just add some syllables. And since there's no wrong answer, it can be any syllable. But just switch syllables. Switch them. Korava she velo valama bondorobo shudravira. La mosha vala shata. Any syllable. Kala. Good, like that. Kola shata vivi. Vandora. Vandora mosha gala vashada. Any syllable. Kule vile vashandora boroba baba. Pondora moshandora voshite. Kelo vala vushato. Andora moshandara vasete. Velo vala mushataramu. Kelo shati ve. Any syllable. Keep going. Switch syllables. Kole veshaturubu. Bashu Baba, Bola Baba, Spirit, I command you to stop blocking her tongue. Stop it right now. Kola Vashate, Hello Vashima, Ondara Voshigeva. Speak it out louder, louder. Good, just like that. Different syllables. Anda Voshanda, Uma Masha Vashata, Ondara Voshite Veleva, Valu Moshanda Raba. Echo Ashobobasha Dara Vosite Koya Masha Vasa Nello Baba. Use different ones. Good. You notice you're using different ones? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Now, here's how you draw in the whole. Huh? I'm not used to it. Oh, you're fine. Uh, that was the first time you did it. Okay. Now, this time, put a little hum to it. 
and when you sing in the Spirit, it draws in the Holy Ghost. Robo shavelo la tore mo shavola. Hondo robo tu. Ora ve shivele le mula va va va. Hondo robo shelo la tura mo shivele mo. Halo la lo shamo la va la shile. Halo la la mo shavo la le la la la. Good, excellent. Keep going. Ora bo shivo la tura mo shivele mo. Go. Now you are not wanted. Go. Do you want to get that paper? How'd she do? I don't know. I mean, she said that she still needs to have a cry. Can't hear myself thinking there. How'd you do tonight? I think How'd it go tonight? once you address that, I think it was a lot better. And I, yeah. instead of coughing Did and throwing up, I think I breathed. Did it come out? I think so. I don't okay. really know. Now, here's the deal. Uh, when you were younger and you didn't remember it, a fear spirit got in your body. Okay, the fear causes eating disorders. Fear. Your mother has fear. Okay. So the problem is now complicated. It's it's bifurc it's a doubled. Your mother has fear, and you, not, you got fear. But the fear was in the family before you were born. See, she's a lot older than you. So the spirits come from the parents of the kids. They don't come from the kids of us. Okay? So uh, when you forgave that guy for molesting you, was it fondling or something? I think so. It's hard okay. to remember. Well, it's, there's no need to remember it. As long as you forgave him. You can that spirit will come right out of there. See, the only way to get rid of your mother's fear spirit, fear spirits usually hide in this area right here in the torso. That's where they normally hide. That's it. And then they then they'll give you a stab or a notch or a yeah. twist yes. or a little bit of tension. It'll yeah, get that, tight there. Uh -huh. It goes right in there. Okay. So uh, if your mother will repent of this, okay, and get that thing out of there, she'll be completely well and you won't have a problem again there never was anything wrong with it <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you it was all a spiritual trick the spirit was telling you you had an eating disorder and then he, he sent you to a doctor or a therapist or somebody and they said you had an eating disorder so the devil's getting people to confirm lies What's the truth of the matter? You're a beautiful woman of God. You're a wonderful person. You got a nice wanna... personality. Look how pretty you are. You're a <laughs> lovely person. That's the truth. What they told you was a lie. And you're not going to receive lies anymore. Is that correct? correct. You're not going to listen to the devil anymore. All right. Now, when you go home tonight, you read John chapter 14. That's what I was reading. Oh, it's a confirmation. <laughs> Look how pretty your hair is. And her face, you're gorgeous. <laughs> now, you're a perfect daughter. I don't get any better than you. Thank you. All right. Now, we don't know who that guy's name was, do we? Okay, well, I'm going to... I got one more thing to do. I'm going to pretend I'm that guy. He was a pervert. Okay, I'm going to pretend I'm him. Let's say his name was Bob. I'm Bob. Okay? I'm Bob right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for what I did. It's okay. I was wrong. I forgive you. I'm sorry I hurt you. That's what he should have said. Okay, he's not here to say, so I'm saying it for him. And you're healed. Now you're praying for your mother so she can get healed. You're coming back and getting healed, right, Mama? Yeah, I've been here twice now. Well, that's not a point. You're I don't live getting here. more. <laughs> Where do you live? We used to live here. Where do you live? Cuba, Missouri. You're in Missouri? Yeah. But we came back. God sent us on this journey back here. Uh, will you be here next week? Or are you going somewhere? We you're not going to go be. back to Missouri, but I 
Just have been trying to be led by the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, no, that's hard to do when you got fear, okay? Uh -huh. So. I don't know. 